in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity you have given us to listen to you on this Holy Thursday, a day when you bid farewell to humanity, a day when you left a souvenir for humanity, your own presence, the assurance of the fact that you are going to be with us until the end of time. And that presence was in the Eucharist. Help us, Lord, to understand the mysteries we have begun to celebrate with this Holy Thursday being the beginning of that freedom. May you deepen our faith. May you strengthen us, even if we may not celebrate the way we have always been used to. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is Holy Thursday. And today we are celebrating in the church two important events. First, the institution of the Eucharist. Second, the institution of priesthood. By the fact that Jesus instituted the Eucharist on that evening, on that solemn evening when he gathered with the disciples, it meant that Eucharist had to be celebrated and it had to be celebrated by the priests. That is why we usually have two masses on this day. One in the morning, which is meant mostly for the priests and their bishops. So the priests will gather around their bishop and then there will be the consecration of the three oils we use for ministry. That is the consecration of catechumenate oil, the consecration of um, the oil for the sick, and the consecration of chrism oil. We know very well that the catechumenate oil is the oil that is usually given for those who are preparing for baptism, those who are in training, and it's usually placed on the chest to say, let everything that you are going to listen to remain in your heart. Let it be deep that you may have strong foundations of your faith, that you may deepen your own understanding of your Christian faith. That is why it is placed on the chest. When you see the children who are getting baptized, that oil reminds a child that you are a learner, you are a disciple from now on, and you are to listen. And when you listen, let everything that you listen to remain in your heart. Then we have the chrism oil. The chrism oil is used only for the three sacraments that cannot be repeated in the church. We use the chrism oil at baptism on the forehead to seal, to say now you are forever belonging to Christ. You are anointed for Christ and on the forehead that the world may know, the world may see. Here is a Christian. And so every time you allow your face to be seen, that face must display somebody who has been anointed. And then we have confirmation. At confirmation, that oil again is placed on the forehead. And, and a slap by the bishop to say, listen, you are now fortified. You are now strengthened. You now belong to the church. And nothing should shake you. Nothing should make you change the direction that God has given you now. And then we have priesthood in the hands. The oils in the hands 
the chrism oil for a priest because their hands are the ones that are going to be used to pray for people, to consecrate the Eucharist, to bless the people. These are anointed hands and the anointed hands are anointed with the chrism oil. My priesthood is forever. It is only on these three occasions that we see the chrism oil used. And because of the element of the seal attached to the chrism oil, these sacraments cannot be repeated. You are a Catholic and you decide to go and join a Pentecostal church or Seventh-day Adventist. You come back to the church. You are not going to be rebaptized. That's it, because that oil that was put on your on your forehead is a permanent stamp. It is a stamp that cannot be removed. And so, since it does it bears a permanent stamp, that is why we see even somebody who has been a priest. And then this person somehow strays and wants to come back to serve as a priest. The church will not reordain that priest if he meets the conditions required for readmission. He will be just given a moment of reflection or some retreat and then reinserted into the priesthood. And so understanding the importance of these oils, these oils are blessed on, to, on a day like today. Though today we may not have bishops surrounded by so many priests knowing the conditions we are facing with the coronavirus. But the thing is, those oils are still going to be blessed so that they may help us, assist us in our ministry as priests. And then the other part that is very important is the fact that uh, today, as we, as we understand, we have the institution of priesthood. And many of us don't really understand what this priesthood is all about. The priesthood I have is not my priesthood. It's the priesthood of Christ. And the priesthood I have differs from the priesthood that we all have. Every Christian, by virtue of baptism, because of that oil that is put on you, the chrism oil, you are a priest, you are a queen and king, and you are a prophet because in the Old Testament, the chrism oil was used for kings, to anoint kings, to anoint prophets, and to anoint the priests. So since by virtue of baptism you get that anointing, you also share in the priesthood of Christ. What is the work of a priest? The work of a priest is to help people understand the path of life by sacrificing on their behalf. So a priest is meant to be a sacrifice. A priest is meant to be somebody who sacrifices on behalf of others. As it recently happened, we, you have heard of so many priests dying in this coronavirus era here in Italy. But one thing you never heard perhaps, which people don't want to, to publicize because that will give a very good picture about the church because people want to see everything evil about the church. Is this priest, a 72-year-old priest, who, suffering from coronavirus, with intensive care in him, on him, having that uh, ventilator, he saw somebody who was younger and who was more in need. He removed that ventilator and told the doctor, the nurses attending to him to give to somebody else 
was next to him was panting for breath. And that happened and the priest died. Sacrifice. That reminds me of Maximilian Kobe, who had to save a man who was crying because he had his own family to take care of. St. Maximilian Kobe in the concentration camp asked that this man be freed so that he takes his place. And he did that. And he was left to starve for days until he died. Until he died. Sacrifice of a priest. And that sacrifice is what is meant to be in our lives if all of us share in the priesthood of Christ. We are supposed to learn how to sacrifice, how to be selfless. Sachedos, sachedos of sacrifice. One sembe in, in, um, in Chewa, one sembe, one of sacrifice. The one who offers sacrifice. And that sacrifice is what we are called to to have as Christians, as believers who share in the priesthood of Christ. And then the other aspect of the oil that we use is prophetic part. To be a prophet is to point out the truth where it should be pointed out, not just to be a foreteller. A prophet is one who is truthful. A prophet is one who is authentic. A prophet is one who faces facts, not lies, not yeses. And so if we are baptized and we share in the prophetic ministry of Christ, we are supposed to be people who are able, who are able to bear the message of truth, who are able to be witnesses to the world out there. The other aspect is to be kings and queens in the kingdom of God, the royal priesthood, the kingdom of God, where all of us baptize. We are kings and queens. What is the work of a king and a queen? A king is one who knows that the world depends on me. The world relies on me. A king, a queen is a responsible somebody. Many of our young people today don't know the responsibility placed upon their heads. And so they blame everybody else and anybody else. And they forget about what God wants them to do and achieve in their lives as kings and queens. If you are a king and a queen, then you are, ma then you are meant to live a life of example. You must show example in your own life. Don't wait for some people to tell you what to do. Don't wait for the world to direct you on the path. You know what to do. Many of us are deceived by the fact that the young people are the future leaders. You are not a future leader. You are a present leader. You have a commission placed upon you to make sure that the world transforms by your own work. It's the power of one. Transformation can be brought by one person. It was brought by Christ. And that transformation we want to imitate in our lives. To be in a position to be kings and queens. A king knows without me the kingdom will not run. A queen knows without me things are not going to flow. There is also another aspect of being a king and a queen. It is the aspect of dignity. To live a life of dignity. To know that without that dignity, the world won't change. Without me dignifying myself, without me respecting myself, the world won't change. So get back to this understanding. You are a king, you are a queen in the kingdom of God. And let that understanding put you on a better perspective, on a better path in your life. And so, 
that is one part of the celebration we are having. I told you that we have two different sort of priests. Two, two, I told you that we have two kinds of priesthood, ministerial priesthood and baptismal priesthood. Ministerial priesthood is what I am having. So I have two priesthoods in me. I am baptized, so I have, I have baptismal priesthood that I shared with you about. In that baptismal priesthood, then I am supposed to be a man and a woman of sacrifice. In ministerial priesthood, I am supposed to serve other people through the sacrifice of the Mass. The Eucharist is what characterizes a priest as a priest. I cannot be a priest if I am not celebrating the Eucharist. So that even if I may not celebrate the Eucharist for the people out there or with the people out there, as a priest I am obliged to celebrate Mass every day. And I have been doing that all my life as a priest. Whether I am at home for holidays or whether I am anywhere else, I make sure that I celebrate that Mass. I've made, it, I've made it a point. I've made it a point that the Eucharist is what begins my day. Because that is part of my priesthood. And that is what makes me link the priesthood of Christ and, and the Eucharist. That's exactly what makes me link the institution of the Eucharist and the institution of priesthood. Because without priesthood, there won't be the Eucharist. Without the Eucharist, there won't be priesthood. I hope that is clear. Today is known as the day of the washing of the feet, the evening part of the celebration. But that is not exactly what we are celebrating. We are celebrating that priesthood that Christ left when he told them, Have you seen what I have done? Have you seen what I have done? You also should wash each other's feet. What is he doing? It's not that we should be washing the feet of other people and that should be our task. No, he's saying, see how I have brought myself low. See how I have shown myself as a man of service. So as a priest, you are supposed to bring yourself low so that others may be raised up in service. Priesthood and tell service. The Eucharist entails service. And when I participate in the Eucharist, I'm reminded of the fact that Christ who was broken for us wants us to break ourselves for others. Christ who was given to the world wants us to give ourselves to the world for others to benefit. And knowing this, then we understand the importance of the mysteries we are celebrating today. This all began in Egypt when the Israelites were given that Passover, the Passover, the Passover meal that they had to celebrate when God passed on the doors through his angel of the Israelites to serve them. Because they had sprinkled the blood on their doors. And that blood they sprinkled, when, whenever the angel would see the blood on the door, the angel would know this is the house of Israel. So he would pass over. And so we call it Passover. It's a Passover. Why? Because the angel passed over and went wherever the doors had no blood. That blood of the lamp served the people of God. Now, the new blood that saves us is the blood of Jesus Christ, the new lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so he says, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. 
for the sins to be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. He asks us to do it in his memory. That's why many other churches call it a memorial. For us, it is the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. It's not just a memorial. We know he says, this is my body. This is my blood. Not this is a remembrance of my body, a remembrance of my blood. No, this is my body. A thing that really affected Martin Luther. Martin Luther said to be the father of Protestant Reformation. He got it so well. He kept repeating that. He inscribed that on his desk in the classroom. This is my body. He didn't say this is the resemblance of my body. This is my body. Do this in memory of me. And so the readings we have today refer to memory, memory, memory. The first reading uh, that, that, that is taken from um, the Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 8, and then 11 to 14, mentions about the memory. It, say, it says, Towards the end, this day shall be for you a memorial day. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. It's not just for a while, throughout your generations. It shall be a memorial day, a day to remember. And again, in the second reading that we are taking from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, we hear, Do this in remembrance of me. What Paul received is what now he hands on. And Paul is writing this before any gospel could be written. And so he says, Do this in remembrance of me in the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembrance, memory, memory. We are to take this day as a day of remembering Christ who has given himself for us. We have so many things that we are worried about. We have so many things that are disturbing us in this time of the coronavirus. Worries and anxiety. And some of us may get even into depression. But you know what will keep us sane? It's the remembrance, remembering the good things that the Lord has done in our lives, remembering the very fact that God himself came down and dwelt among us. Even if corona may dwell among us, it won't be equal to God coming to dwell among us who tells us that he will be with us until the end of time. He's with us. And he wants us to take courage. He wants us to get back to him and understand that he is in charge. He is in control of the situation right now. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Triduum to you all.